By rematerializing the erased visual history, I was hoping that this installation would make us think about how can we reflect on what had happened. How can we keep our democracy safe now in the current times of apparent advance of populist leaderships in the world? I find it fascinating that actually these models and molds can potentially be used to recreate the monumental sculptures and be reactivated in the service of the same totalitarian ideologies. That's one of the reasons why this installation took a shape of a broken barricade. The crumbling materiality is contrasted with the strength of its resistance. I painted the floor in pristine white color. When you walk on it, you leave traces. It's a cascade of gray and white square layers. And to me, this represent layers of time and the impermanence of every changing ideology. In the distance, there is a small cement gray square. It's empty. Then a larger white square emerges on which I place the installation. And then even the largest cement square fragment close to the entrance. I piled sculptures one on top of the other and had been arranged as if accidentally and violently, not how one would place a valuable artifact in a museum. This creates unexpected relationships between individual sculptures. When looking closely, you'll find hundreds of variations of these compositions. Stories of courage, tragedy, brutality, and misguided beliefs. Every viewer will see their own story in this and tap into their conscious and unconscious collective memory. To me, this barricade is made out of corpses. It's a scene of heartbreaking battlefield, of a massacre really, where all sides are dead. There are dismembered bodies, heads, legs and arms and headless horses. Aesthetically, these sculptures are profoundly beautiful works of art made by a talented man in classical tradition of Greek, Roman and Renaissance art. These sculptures collectively represent one of the ideologies that eliminated millions of people in the last hundred years and changed the entire direction of modern history. I see tragedy of individual human beings and of the country at the same time. I see whole history of humankind with its brutality of war and beauty of art that sinks inside me in an instantaneous moment of realization, like moment of dying. A human tragedy and a tragedy of art of iconoclasm is embodied here visually. So the history behind this installation, its title is that 100 years ago in 1918, Lenin ordered removal of all the sculptures erected in honor of Tsars and their servants. The way to be replaced with communist monumental propaganda art. In turn, 30 years ago, in 1989, all these communist sculptures were toppled in a symbolic gesture as Soviet Union was breaking down and Georgia became an independent country. Monuments were mostly melted down for their valuable metal. What we see here is a complete archive but one of the most prominent Soviet monumental sculptors, Valentin Toberidze. He was particularly famous for sculptures of Lenin and Stalin. However, in a double erasure, family also got rid of all the models and molds of Lenin, and only one of Stalin's models accidentally survived. We see here figures of World War II heroes, workers, soldiers, and prominent cultural Soviet figures. They are very discolored crumbling, mostly broken models, parts, fragments and molds. It is paradoxical that these fragile models were once used to make those huge bronze Soviet sculptures which dominated most important and central public squares, government and cultural buildings around Georgia and Russia as well. Another question this installation asks is how should we preserve 
such artworks. I have a very personal connection to Toboridze family. I grew up playing with Valentin Toboridze's granddaughter in his studio and garden. I used to climb these giant fragments of Lenin's head and body. Ironically, this was my playground. 100 years after, 30 years on exhibition took place in a grand building which used to be a communist newspaper publishing and printing house. Now it is in the process of being refurbished into a luxurious hotel. The visitors to Traniel had to climb through four stories of renovation and rubble to see the artworks. I found this location particularly interesting and poignant. It mirrored the everyday life in Georgia and spoke to the idea of this work and its history at large. Archaeological layers here are arguably formed so fast, they're so thin that one erases the other rather than building on. Perhaps such speed of development might exclude the necessary reflection and preservation of important history and collective memory.